Hello again, Rebecca here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Mixed Media Frenzy. Today's scrap lift is going to be this fabulous one with all the butterflies and the craft um, with the mixed media. So here are all the items that I am going to use and I'm going to get all of those pictures on there. They're from several different events of um, her running in 2020, but it was the last that I had and I just wanted to polish them off. So I do take my white gesso and make a little hole like mashed potatoes. And I'm taking my Heidi Swap Color Shine and I believe that color is called mustard. Could be wrong, I'm looking. Yes, it's mustard. And I am just going to mix that into the Heidi Swap or the um, Vicky Booten white gesso. You guys know I have absolutely no luck with white gesso, and this is the only way that I have found to make it work, is to make it a color and make it a part of my background. So I do get that all mixed in. Um, I'm not really doing this to prep the page. I'm just doing this to create the mixed media background effect on the page. It looked like they had some... They the, On the original layout, there was elements of this behind it. Now mine is going to be a lot bigger <laughs> let's just be honest it's gonna be a lot bigger because I have more photos and I'm going to do um, some heat embossing as well which I will have to apologize because I was doing this early in the morning and <laughs> you guys know my fiance like lives to like make me laugh and he started being silly and got me all flustered and I lost the footage I thought I was recording when I wasn't, and then I thought I wasn't recording when I was, so the whole heat and boss did not get um, on video, I guess. Right there, I am going to take my Close to My Heart Shimmer Brush in Sundance, just to give it a darker color and some shimmer. You guys know I love the Close to My Heart Shimmer Brushes. Um, if you want to pick any of these up, I will have the link to my website down below. They last a very long time. They are beautiful shimmer, and they are very, very reasonably priced. And if you want to pick some up and help support my channel, I would appreciate it. If not, totally understand. If you already have a Close to My Heart representative, go ahead and pick it up from them, though. So I do set that to the side and let it dry. I am going to go ahead and pull out this old Project Life Stampin' Up! stamp set because I want the sketchy circles. And I'm just kind of seeing how, how how and where I'm thinking about putting my pictures. Um, I do use those little um, makeshift index cards to label my project trays. If you see right there, my stays on ink was very dry. It didn't even come off on my finger. So I do leave this in because this, I'm showing you guys re-inking my ink pad. And I do get it very juicy. I chose the stays on, stays on because it, it works the best on the mixed media that I've found. I'm sure there's other products out there that work just as well. But I knew I was going to be doing a lot on it. So I do test it to see if I've got it inky enough. And I did not feel like it was juicy enough. And I'm just taking a palette knife that I don't use for anything else ever and just using that to smush it all over the um, pad there to get it nice and juicy. And then I do break out and see, oh, it's very, very juicy now. Yay! I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off just a little bit. It does stain, but I do have what we call stays on cleaner. I picked it up at Stampin' Up! I'm sure you can pick it up other places. And it's probably 10 years old and works like a champ. So I do use that on my stamps as well, just so you guys know. So I'm going to go ahead and re-ink that and start popping these down and around. And while I am doing that and getting a couple of these on the page, I do want to remind you today is a hop and getting a drink of my coffee. Do not forget to check out the description box down below to see all my lovely crafty friends that participate every week in the mixed media frenzy and at the end of every month we do have a hop where we invite everyone to play along and we give a sketch or a layout that is everyone can scrap lift and see what they create and it'll all be listed in the facebook group so i will have that link down below as well i do go ahead and use the stays on cleaner to get the ink off and then i just take 
um, some water and rinse the cleaner off the stamp. Not sure if that makes a difference or not, but it does. So here we go. I actually filmed this part three different times because I kept screwing it up. So I took my Versamark ink, my big butterfly stamp, and got those stamped down, used my black um, embossing powder, and I'm thinking about upgrading all my embossing powders to the uh, Brutus Monroe, so you will see me starting to use a lot more of it. I have a lot of it, and I don't want to throw it away, so I'm going to have to really work through some embossing before I uh, start purchasing more. Because you guys know my motto, use what you have and then upgrade. And since I, you know, have had a ton and haven't really embossed a lot, I still have a ton. So I'm just going to start embossing. Yeah. So anyway, I love the dramatic effect of the big black shiny embossed butterflies on the um, craft colored cardstock. I had to think about what color that was. And the way it pops off of the fine white gesso that I dyed. So I do trim these down very small. And I grab a older Stampin' Up! 6x6 paper pad. Because I knew I wanted to mat these. But I didn't really want... I didn't have any um, collection kit pulled for this uh, layout. So um, I just went ahead and found this one. And it has a lot of fun neutrals. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop those in and I am going to use all of those to do like a billion mats on my four photos because they're small like seriously small <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to give them just a little bit more of an ump so I go ahead and get them all down and I you know in the process use up some of my six by six papers I don't know if I make you watch me do all this I will apologize if I do that is what we call poor editing because I should have edited this out because it takes me some time and I go through each one and the only <laughs> the first one's the only one that I'm able to get all four photos matted out of and then I have to go on to using two sheets. I do save the bigger scraps though. Um, the smaller ones though, they just go in my recycling bin. I do not pull my six by six paper pads hardly at all. So I don't want to save the scraps because I know that I won't just be honest and they're scraps. So they don't really go in the recycling bin and you'll see right here. I'm going to see, oh, no, nope, I'm sorry. I do get what I get it right out of this one, but this is the last one. So I lied to you guys. I do apologize. I don't like being a liar, so I am very sorry. <laughs> I am just using my scissors to roughly trim those up. It's mixed media, so it's supposed to be messy. Uh, also, I did not um, use my cool little powder bag, anti-static bag, before I laid the embossing powder down. So there was some little bits and bobs that made it onto the page. But I'm okay with that because mixed media is messy. And this is um, supposed to be a grungy one which I love the look of. That is so fabulous. I finally get those all down there, and I don't make you watch me do all that. I decide that it needs to be matted in orange uh, because that is her school colors, or orange and black, so I thought, why not? I do just take a quarter of an inch off each side because I, I want to keep the element centered. Um, now you will see something. I pulled out this orangey um, 12 by 12 cardstock, and I put it on there. And I'm like, something's wrong. And then I realized, like, I stop and I look. And I'm like, let me count this. Uh, yeah, it's been cut, so it's not a full sheet. And it was in my full sheet, so I have no idea what I did there, you guys. So I go back over to my cardstock, and I grab another piece, and I'm like, I don't know. And I'm going to go ahead and get that stuck down. Um, this is my tried and true method. I go ahead and center it up, and then hold it down with my forearm. And get the one side down, and then I'm able to do the rest and keep it centered on the page. And then I just flip it over and make sure it is adhered nicely to the page. I'm going to take my washi and stick these two photos together so that I can move them as a cohesive unit. And I'm going to do the same thing to this one, holding them in a nice little area that I like. And I keep looking at it, and I'm going to do the same thing. Stick a little bit of washi, realizing I don't need to use a whole bunch. And then I'm going to get it centered, get it where I like it. I'm going to flip the whole thing over and put another thing of washi right there. Um, I do use a little bit more there because it's it's pretty thick, you guys. It's very heavy. 
Um, the ATG, for some reason, does not want to stick on that washi, but it's from Studio Calico, and it's, it's like, thick. It's, like, it's some good washi tape. Uh, I just don't use that washi tape for anything, but, you know, what you would use normal tape for. I wear out so much of it, I need to use, like, some fun stacked washi layout, but, you know. I do pull out my fabric flowers, and those are from, oh, um, the place where you get the brads. Islet Outlet, <laughs> and they were at the craft show, and I picked up all their colors because they had a huge sale, and I'm going to put three colors, three little clusters with the flowers in orange, um, because those are her school colors, and she has on orange and black uniforms while she's running track. I'm not real sure why she's got orange in the top and black in the bottom. I don't know if that's varsity and JV. She was a freshman, and she ran for varsity and competed in the... Um, uh, you know, whatever they had, the state finals or whatever. Um, so I usually just hold them onto my brad setter. <laughs> my little pokey tool. Stab myself like three times, you guys. It was horrible. And pop them down where I want them. So I just get them all layered up in there nicely. And I just use that to put it where I want it. Stick my brad through. Bend it over. Bend it over. Stick it through and then push those prongs down and then I will flip it over and go ahead and use the washi tape to adhere the brad backs um, the tines because I don't want them to snag or scratch or rip another photo it can happen so we just use a little bit of washi again just to secure that that doesn't happen and my layout is coming nicely to an end I'm going to stick some wood veneer in here um this is going to be part of my title. I am, I'm also going to have three wooden elements, and I had two, and I couldn't find a third, so I went with the nine because she is in ninth grade. Take my fun thickers. They are the, the, the light, and I'm just going to do a TH. And at first, I was going to leave it, and then I was like, oh, no, that did not like that, so we were going to write grade to fill in that area. Um, had I put it on the other side, which I did think about moving it, but I'd already used my gesso. I'd already used my um, my liquid glue, and it would have torn the paper. So we're just going to make the title right up there. Ninth grade. And that is going to be it. Oh, no. For the title. It's going to be it for the title. That's what I meant to say. I got this uh, compass wood veneer piece, and I thought, you know, she's running. So she should always be running in the right direction, right? Da -da -da. I'm going to go ahead and stick that on that flower crest cluster and finish off the title with ninth grade dream now obviously i don't have the wood veneer broken up into the three different areas but i'm totally fine with that i'm going to take my clear wink of stella i don't know if this sucker is dried up or not um or i'm just so used to the close to my heart shimmer pins that the wink of stella does not do it for me anymore um because i put it on there and yeah you see i even pull over a piece of scrap little cardstock and those are what I put on my project trays it's just so that <laughs> I can keep them sorted out and know what video to go back to because I work on all six at the same time pretty much I'm not gonna lie to you guys depending on if things are drying or what's going on and I just rotate them up to the top and then when I finish one they all go up and the bottom one becomes the new one that goes in it's a fabulous system so far so I am trying to make things shimmery, and it's just, I don't like it. So I grab my Sundance shimmer pen once again, and I'm just going to go ahead and color the wood veneer, and yeah, that is shimmery. So I'm going to have to go ahead and invest in a clear close to my heart um, shimmer pen, because I didn't. I got all the other colors, but I've had, I have so many Wink Estella clear ones from when I was a card maker, and Stampin' Up! sold them. But I just think that they're not shimmery enough for me, just to be honest. And for the price that the Close My Heart ones are, I'm just going to go ahead and get that and love it. I am just painting right over it. And the brush is so finely, I mean, I'm not getting it anywhere but where it needs to be. So now that I've got that done, that is pretty much going to do it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.